Hello my dear ones. It is great to see you, or at least talk to you, uh, and in many cases see you. And I just got back from a week up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I had to get to the mountains. I've been so busy it's like, ah! And you guys got me up on my birthday. That got me bad. Look at my pretty Volkswagen birdhouse. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I, I look at that, and I remember living in that for a couple of years. And back when I was young like that, what was I, 19 or 20, it didn't seem like it was too bad. But uh, looking at it now, it's like fruititarian. I want to thank you for all your gifts of love and all that. You guys, you know, you all have big hearts. And I love big-hearted people. It's nice to, to have a lot of love. Um, this is Emily. Thank you, Emily. She just did finish uh, the DVDs, I believe, or this level one. We have a graduation here, guys. This is Morgan. She's graduating. She's from Ohio. That's pretty cool. And uh, thanks for the donation, Cindy Farmer, from her book, her beautiful, beautiful children's book, which I will promote every day of the week forever. And by the way, finally, we have our new site up. It's called Dr. Morse's Member Library. And uh, I don't know why, but it's just taken us a while to, uh, to get these things up. Like, I'd like to have had them up a year ago. But we are... I'm putting the hammer down around here. So uh, we're getting things done the way we want to get them done. And uh, Patty Legger and 15 others. Yo, bro, what the heck is that? <laughs> I love you guys. You know what? That's pretty cool. I love you guys. That's really cool. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of spiritual things first here because uh, and this one I won't mention any names because I, I we don't know first of all but it does apply here and uh, uh, let me say this is a tough world when you start getting beyond the mind and you're becoming more awake and watching and seeing things as opposed to thinking about things it greatly changes your perspective greatly because now you become one of the awakened ones which means simply you're not lost in the chain of thoughts that's never ending one thought after another thought one desire after another desire and that what motivates you in your life about having things, moving here, moving there, doing this, doing that, desire and thought to work together. And that's the astral body and the mind. These are two different bodies. You can have, you can see a lot of intellectuals that do not have emotions. And you see a lot of emotional people that are not so intellectual. Twitchell once said, it's easier for the emotional person to enter the worlds of heaven, as he calls them, as opposed to the intellectual, because the mind controls creation, creates it, it's duality. And so thought is the moving factor, is the dualistic factor, the magnetic factor, the polarization of chemistry even, and remember the mind over matter sort of thing. And so difficult when you get trapped or lost in the mind and in thinking. Those of you that are working on the present moment of being watchful, because all the awareness, all the knowledge, everything's already here. And by pulling yourself away from the mind, you realize that you're just playing the game of, of soap operas. You're just playing the game of creation. And at this level, the physical body is, a, is a, the most mundane, the most limited, the most finite, if you will, and therefore more, more prone to the negative forces by far. 
and we happen to be in. Of course, I look over this and I wonder when was the positive time on here. Some people claim Atlantis, Lumeria, things like that, but I don't know. Pretty, a lot of negativity out there. There's a lot of positivity coming, that's for sure. There's been a lot of Earth changes and things like that, but it's not just Earth. Earth is just part of the physical universe with billions of Earths. So, uh, I want to read you this as a question that came in here, and I won't give the name here. And this is, uh, and I hope I can read it without breaking up. I tell you what, these adrenals of mine about had it. I have stage 4 right breast cancer, lip nodes, lungs, and liver. The questions I have are, uh, for Dr. Morris, are spiritual, not religious, or this person is not religious. The only, the only difference between a religious, a religion thinker, and I gave you the clue right there, and believer, the emotional component, is knowingness versus unawareness. Simply, I'll pray to, I will ask for help, I will believe in, when the difference between the two the spiritual person becomes the knower. You don't have to pray to anything because that means that you're looking for something outside of yourself. And that's hard to take for those that are in the religious fields because it's always been we the little human and God the, the big man in the white beard in the chair or some deity. Even though in all religions, if you look, uh, the Creator is portrayed as an infinite being, meaning there is no infinite being to it. Infinite means there's no beginning and no end, and you've heard that talked about before. That there's, there, 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 there's, there's no points of identification because it is pure awareness. And that's hard to define because there's no definition to that because it's everything. How do you define everything as one? Very difficult. You can experience it, but to define it through the mind is difficult because you're defining an experience of something that's infinite and everything coming from that to individualization and separation. So those that are in the religious fields, their emotions is what propels their union. When you get into things like the Sufi order, there's techniques that they use like the whirling dervishes and things that pull you or merge you with that. Sufi has a, a, a thing known as God absorption. A God absorption simply means that you quit thinking. You quit separating yourself, identifying yourself as separate than. And the only way you can do that is get beyond thought. Because it is the mind that you're using that separates you from the consciousness, from the, the awareness of it. There's awareness behind the mind. It is not the mind. It is you. The mind only takes that awareness and then divides it into streams of thought and, and memory. When you get in the lower mind, you've got memory, things like that. That's called the causal mind. That's this yellow section. The blue and the, and the orange here are the mental worlds. Even the violet is the ego, the id. So, that's the only difference between the two. And it's really a razor's edge because I know plenty of people that are Southern Baptists or they're, are, are steeped in very heavy ritualistic thinking and emotional control wake up. Just simply wake up with a snap of a finger. So you can't judge anybody for being involved in whatever they're involved in because there's no judgment to anything here. One just plays a role. And you don't have to play the role of the little human and the big God and then I'm going to go to God because you're already home. That's the secret. You cannot be here without a body. That's why you have a body. 
you're already home, just do not realize it because your thoughts and your emotions tie you to these worlds of duality. It's the only reason when you let go of duality, desire. Remember, Buddha said, go the desireless way. Why did he say that? Jesus said, become like little children. It means quit thinking, just live in the present moment, play in the present moment without thought or desire. It's all in all the teachings, but it's hard for for the individual to pull out of that. That's why you need an individual that can be a way shower. They can say, hey, listen, it's just your thinking. It's just your desires. Stop that and you'll wake up. That's what a true, we'll use the word master is for, is to say, oh, it's just your thinking and just your, your, your uh, imagination or your emotions. It's the game that you're playing in your bodies, but you're not your bodies. And that's important in response to this question, because you have to understand that you can never be killed, can never be hurt because you are living the experience in creation of being a female, a male, a tree, a plant, uh, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter because you are living that experience, but you're not the experience that you're living. You're simply experiencing it. It's like going to a good movie. God likes to go to a good movie. The problem is, is when you're omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient, you're everything. How do you watch a movie? How do you have something other than yourself if you're all things? And that's called the illusion or the maya. The maya of life, which simply says that it individualizes itself and it creates duality, positive and negative. And that's magnetism that creates movement that creates separation and form. You need the elements to come together, right? So you can go all the way down to the subatomic particles of, of electrons and protons circling around a nucleus and all this kind of stuff. Then you can get into ionization to where the movement of electrons and the movement of pHs. You get into all of that. And then the stacking of that or the Lego stacking, creating elements. You know, the atom creating elements and the elements creating substances, and you get into that and then into form and then into that, da 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 da. In reality, it's all just one playing. So, let me read you the rest of this. The first question is if I'm wondering what would happen to me, my soul, if I was to take my own life before the pain gets too much. I get that question, to be honest with you. I get that. I get that. Because it's a thought a lot of people have because this world isn't fun anymore, hardly. The negativity is so high and it's, quite frankly, whacking ass a little bit. So, yeah, interesting questions, particularly those that are more awake and just go, oh my God. But I want you to realize that the phaseology here, my soul, none of you have a soul, none of you. You are soul, if we could use that word. It's limiting because it limits you to one, but you are that which is you. You cannot be anything else. So you want to shift. All of you want to do it anyway, but particularly those that do not think they're going to live. Now, this doesn't mean you're not going to live when you have cancer in four places. Who cares? Because what is it? What's cancer? It's simply a damaged cell. It's how you treat that that ends up killing people. Not necessarily the fact. You realize that one system, even though it sounds like a record, it's a one system that affects all cells. And when your lymphatic system is chronically backed up, it starts breaking down cells in the liver, could break it down in the spleen, in the bowel wall, in the breast, in the prostate. It can happen all at once, this spot, this spot, this spot. It really happens when they give you chemo, which is one of the stronger acids of life. It starts accelerating the breakdown of these cells. 
Their idea is to focus on the cells. You guys know that that is idiocy. You focus on what's breaking down the cell. You don't focus on trying to get rid of the cell. I was watching a pharmaceutical commercial over the weekend. And there's uh, immune cells in your body called uh, eosinophils. And these eosinophils are basically immune cells. They help in your immunity. I think some of them become macrophages. I can't remember right off the hand, but eosinophils are common immune cells. They're, this, they, this pharmaceutical commercial blames them for, I think it was COPD or something. And so this chemical medication goes and targets those eosinophils. Really? That's your main immune cells. Part of them anyway. It's probably the lower end of them, but still. And your body and you're attacking that. And that's the problem. They're blaming your immune system for attacking yourself. And it's like, really? That's the idiocy and the extremely childlike mind of the medical profession. I mean, and pharmaceutical worlds and people buy into this crap all the time. So realize if you have what they call cancer simply means you're, you have cells that are being chewed on. And maybe the body because the lymph system is backed up, then the body can't get them to the lymph nodes. Then you're going to see a lot of activity in that tissue. Absolutely. But you never want to put the death of the physical organism at blame. You can fix that system. I don't care if you're stage 10. These stages just simply means that you're more advanced in the burning of your tissues. That's all it is. Your lymphatic system is more advanced in terms of its stagnation. That's all this is. So to answer this question, it would be better probably to take yourself out on morphine sulfate. That's what takes you out anyway, if you were going to do that, than to find another way because Here's one of the problems that I understand. And this individual does bring this up to light. Is that it's a good way to get a ticket back here. You know, committing suicide is a good way to reincarnate real quick back here to the same thing. You know, the masters always say that you're here to learn and to grow and to become awake. And if you're not learning your lessons, then you're going to re visit this place until you do or until you burn off what you created here. This is why I tell you about living in the now because it is the quickest way to burn your karma, which is simply means what you created off because there's one law that that, that resonates through all re all religious teachings if you look at it that way. And that is you reap what you sow, your karma and physics says it just as good. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Sometimes these reactions do not occur quickly, especially in these subtle areas of thought and emotions. So you have karma from all levels, physical, astral, emotional and mental karma. You have all these levels. It simply means you put out a certain energy that hasn't come back to you yet. So what the spiritual giants do is help you to work this out in your dream state. In other words, sometimes when you're not fully conscious of that fact, it's a big help. And sometimes your life starts accelerating. A lot of negative things happen to you. And it just simply means that they're helping you clean yourself faster. And the more that you pull back to awareness and you quit creating through desire and thought, you're going to see all these things that you have created in the past work themselves out. And that's what you want. Get yourself free. And that's what some of us are here for. That's why a lot of you see me in the dream state. We are here to help you burn this off in this lifetime or certainly as quick as you're willing to allow it to burn itself off. So there's a lot of spiritual giants here to help. Tons of them. I've mentioned a few like Fubi Quants and the Ek Masters are incredible. There are a lot of other masters or beings. There's the Ascended Masters, Saint Germain and the like. I don't really deal with those levels of guys and not 
putting anybody down or anything. Everybody's here in a beautiful state of helping and everything. So, no, but there are levels of uh, beings that uh, uh, some are just more aware than others and the ability to help and stuff like that. That's all. I'm not being negative toward any spiritual giant in any way, shape, or form. But I would turn it around and say, you know what, if you need to feel like you need to be here and finish off this, then know yourself, get busy, focused on how you, when you're a stage four or anything, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to change your diet. Number one, you know, I'm thinking 40 days. That sounds like a good time. 40 days, 40 nights. Uh, Jesus did it. So I think I could do it. Yeah, but on grapes. You know, really hit on to this. Get the kidneys to filter and go in that direction. If the pain gets too much, take something that is not uh, too much. Like morphine is not where you want to go. You start getting up into the morphines, you really don't want to live anyway, and it's a good way to take yourself out. And they do take a lot of people out in hospice and stuff on morphines. It's because you get in la la land. You don't help yourself, you know, you just don't care anymore, and you let go. Well, as soon as you, it's just that's how you have out of body experiences, you just let go. And when you let go of everything, you're out, baby. And that's some of the secrets of having an out of body experience is you just let go. I mean, just totally let go. When you, when you totally let go, you're out. You will consciously pull back from your human body. So, but I get the question quite heavily, I tell you, because this is not a, I can't say that I'm overly happy here either. I can't wait till this life is done, that's for sure, because this is uh, pretty chemical, pretty, uh, you know. So, um, I get that, sweetheart. Is there a way not to be incarnated as I don't want to come back? And that's, that's the one way. And that's why you don't want to try to go too quick because the chances of that is high, even though some of you might not believe in that, and I respect that, right? But those of us that know how life works and turns over, not to be narcissistic about it, but to say that it is a fact that you, you spend here quite a while. You don't just come here for a few years, then off you go, because 60, 70, 80, 90 years here is nothing. It's a blink in the friggin' eye of a net. So it's, a, it's an ongoing journey. And uh, you'll change forms or you'll change sexes. You can change a lot of things. Depends what you create. And that's by, why awakening up is a better journey. If I was this individual, I would head off into a great fast, get on the earth to get everything working, get my kidneys going and all that. At the same time, I'm going to be looking to let go, learning to how to stop thinking. I'm just going to hang out. Why, why desire anything anymore? Especially if you don't want to be here or you're, you're tired, which I get that. I get a lot of you individuals are tired here. I get it. I am. But, you know, the zest of life comes not physical. It comes from being awake. It comes from being home again. And you can still have a physical body and be awake. Now, it's a limit to how awake you can get and still have a physical body because you'll burn it right up if you get too awake. They won't let you get too far, but uh, still. And you can start using spirituality as a fun tool, you know, even though the body might be uh, going through some pain and suffering. If I see the light, should I go to it? Oh, yeah, I always love the light. I always love the light. Or is there an alternative that is better, and how do I go there? Well, your best bet is to not look outside of yourself for the light. Be the light yourself. Because that's the secret of creation versus the creator. Looking toward or to, or looking from. It's like in our classes, you know, I tell you guys to quit being humans. You know, everybody's playing the role of humans. Quit playing the role of being human. Wake up. Realize that you're just playing the role of being human. If you want to identify yourself as a human, go ahead. 
But you just want to play the role of the human. You don't want to be human. It'll lock you into a world of hell because this world right now is pretty negative. But you want to be the light. Not only surround yourself, but you want to be the light itself because that's what you are. You only are what you perceive yourself to be. Well, quit perceiving yourself to be anything. That's why the secret, and J. Krishnamurti was very good at helping you to learn that the mind is totally a conditioned instrument. Once you break the chain of thought and you learn to be present, or you learn to be the observer as opposed to the thinker, you've, you've put yourself miles ahead of the game. Miles on the road of awakening and letting all this karma burn itself off. Do you have any spiritual advice for a person in my situation? Absolutely. Yep. And that is all of that. Let yourself go. You know, and, and start looking to the inner worlds and listening to the inner music. At the same time, get yourself on a grape fast. You know, a grape diet. And uh, allow that spiritual energy to filter through the physical body. Stress closes off the adrenals. Pain closes off the adrenals. All of this closes down the body. You want to open up all your pathways, relax. Let the lymphatic system, let the nervous system relax and open you. That will also help the drainage of the lymph. When you're tense, you tighten. When you relax, you loosen. So it doesn't matter what happens to your body. If it's time for you to move on, move on and have some fun. But you want to Right on with your question here. Reincarnation is very true, at least for those that know it is, you know. And I get some religions are freak out at that. But deeper examination of Jesus' teachings will lead you into the agnostic levels. Studying the other 23 Gospels will show you a little bit more about reincarnation than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for the Christians. So, it's just realizing how massive the worlds of God are and who you are in this massive uh, thing called creation. Yeah. So, with due respect, I love you. I would not uh, at all uh, think about that right now, but, I, but these are legitimate good questions. I would go after the health of my body, but I also go after awakening. Because let's just say your body's too involved. You just can't get it quick enough. And there are those out there that can't get it quick enough. I'd be happy to go for you if that was my journey. Because you're free. The thing is, though, I've worked hard not to have any more karma. You know? So I, 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 that's what you want to do is burn that off. And allow that to work itself through. And work itself through the, the dream state. Look to the inner master. Look to Fubi Quants or some of the other Ek masters. And uh, they'll help you to clean all that off. There's a lot of beings right now working in these fields because there's so much spiritual awareness here on this planet amongst so much negativity. It's almost like each end of the spectrum. And it's, uh, and I just love the fact that our site is full of spiritual people. I just love that. But don't limit yourself. And how you see yourself. If you see yourself as a human, you just limited yourself to a little bitty body that, that gets sick and, 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 and then it terminates. It can't handle the consciousness anymore. Well, then you just pull out and go. Well, then all this time you wasted playing the body and now you leave and now you play something else. I'm trying to get you to awaken much higher levels than that. And the higher you can awaken yourself during this present lifetime, the better the next one is if you go that route or if you go to some other levels beyond that. Uh, there is so much to do in uh, creation even that is a much higher level and a more conscious level. At those levels it's not all that bad. But um, have fun. Be happy always. 
it, the happiness comes from your awareness of beingness, your awareness that you can't die, you're, you're, you're infinite, you're free. What limits that feeling of freedom? Your desires. Desire automatically takes that sense of freedom and joy and limits it. Thoughts automatically take that sense of freedom, which is beyond thought, and narrows it down to thinking and thought processes. Put yourself when you were going to school and academically cramming. How sick and tired you got from that. Free yourself from all those levels. Doesn't mean you don't use the mind or use your emotions. But you've been doing that for so long, especially when you ask me these questions, you've been doing it for quite a while, many lifetimes. So free yourself from thought and desire for a while. Do the Jesus Buddha thing. Spend time away from that. Spend time hanging around in the now. Enjoy every moment for the moment. Body or no body, so to speak. All right. Here's another question here. One of the, uh, the questions I had was regarding the spiritual transformation of Earth is going through. Well, it's happening to all of the physical. It's happening to all of creation, actually. Nothing happens here, my dear ones, without first, believe it or not, happening in the mental worlds. Nothing can transform itself here without first transforming itself mentally, then emotionally, then physically. And there's a counterpart to this Earth on the astral and mental worlds, the lower mental worlds, as it is with all the planets and all the dimensions. I uh, also had read uh, through Amnik Anik's books. Ooh, I didn't know she had some books out. It's pretty cool. As well as Paul Twitchell's, that to be able to travel to the higher planes, you need a master in the physical body to guide you. Very helpful. Not saying it's essential, but very helpful. Uh, to have a physical master present. Uh, what do you think we're here for? You know, to be a vehicle for that. That's This channel isn't just a health channel. You know it. Matter of fact, you know, the reason for this channel was so I could come in the back door on you guys. Because coming through the front door is oftentimes very difficult. Very difficult to awaken someone by addressing them straight away. So by opening up your health, I'm feeding you a lot of energy. And energy, remember, in quantum physics is intelligence. Well, keep pulling that back to consciousness. So by increasing the intelligence that you're consuming, the energy and awareness that you're consuming it allows to free you and to bring you into a higher level of awareness. So we use these tools to help you to grow spiritually because at the end of the day, this body doesn't matter. This journey doesn't matter. It's just days of our lives. What matters is you and your awareness. How awake are you? How free are you? How much joy and bliss are you as an individualized self? Going all the way back and merging with the one, interesting. Interesting. I won't go there. I'm McGonick for you guys that don't know. She's a Venusian that walked in, I think it was a 12 year old girl's body. I think even the mother acknowledged that of the 12 year old. And uh, she's been around a while on Earth here talks about the difference between the life forms on other planets that uh, we can't see. And it's obvious. I mean, it's like seeing auras. It just depends how you look to what you see. And when you're trying to look too hard, you can't see what's there. Remember those pictures I talk about with all the dots? If you look at the dots, you can't see the beautiful picture behind them. But as soon as you don't care and you pull back and you're just kind of looking at it from a distance, then you see the picture behind it. Same thing. Interesting how this world is. You know? But uh, I don't know if that's always true because a lot of, uh, of uh, 
But the connection is, I, I, I just, uh, for the most part, you have to connect here. I always called it the buddy system. You know, as beings wake up, they put their hand down and pick up others that are awakening. And that's what it is. You, the buddy system here is to, uh, it's a natural phenomenon because it's the only way it can awaken itself. Very difficult to have a non-physical master or being that's, uh, because it's difficult for the individual to look to the inner worlds and pick up a master. Very difficult because they're so fixated out of themselves outwardly that you need to have someone in that respective body to give that little tap or that little kiss or whatever to awaken you. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Which is what I needed help with. If you're able to get this to Dr. Morris, I would appreciate that very much. Yeah. It's always nice, uh, like I said, very difficult for you to look within and touch the inner masters without first having someone tap you on the shoulder and waking you up a little bit at this level. You know, because that's where your attention is fixated. It isn't that you're here, you're only here by your attention. You can't be here in your consciousness only through the respective bodies. Because those of you that are powering up will understand what I mean. <laughs> because uh, you can burn, baby, burn, powering up too much, you know, and uh, that doesn't help anybody or yourself if you burn too quick. I've uh, experienced that a little bit myself. <laughs> but uh, uh, somebody wants to come film us. That sounds good. Uh, all right. So I think those are the two questions that I wanted to touch on here. Uh, if you find this strange, just pass it on and go to the health side of it because for some that's all that matters is the health of their bodies and that's okay too. For others, the deep uh, concern about life and those of you that wake up to serious uh, lymphatic stagnation and that your cells are breaking down in the body, know that it's not you that's breaking down, it's your body that's breaking down. Don't follow your body to that. You know, because you're not your body, you're only using it. It's like having a car that's a little bit too old and you haven't fixed it, you haven't changed your fan belts, you haven't changed your radiator hoses or anything like that, and now they're starting to give way. So you take it and you replace these parts. Well, I'm teaching you how to replace your body's parts. See? And so I wouldn't count myself out, especially if you haven't had time enough to kind of let yourself work on your karma and let things go out. And that's why it's important not to judge others, uh, not to do any of these things like that. Because anything like that limits you and locks you into the judgment of others and locks you into others and things like this. And Why? You want to give everyone and everything its space to be themselves, whatever that may be. You will see things that, uh, that you can identify and not making a judgment because the mind has already categorized all these things in the memory section. So you can observe that. Don't feed that. That's all that is. Hang on two seconds. Sorry about that. Someone brought me a tropical smoothie. Ah, uh, Bahama Mama. Mmm. I love Bahama Mamas. Oh. <laughs> of course, sugar, natural sugar, but still not the perfect smoothie, but still a smoothie. It's uh, holy crap. I can't even pronounce this word. Let's look at some uh, physical problems. 
I forgive me, old country boy syndrome, but my God, I can't pronounce this word at all. It's calcifolaxis. Whatever the hell that is. Vaughn, I don't even know how to pronounce your problem. What is the natural holistic approach to applying and get rid of calcifolaxis? Ah, my mother has been a diabetic for about 27 years. She had a kidney episode, huh? You wonder. Well, that's interesting. Now, if this is a type 2, what's involved? And we'll use their, their thoughts, their thinking. What's involved? The adrenal glands, right? What about type 1? The adrenal glands and the beta cells. Now, what else could be a problem if it's a type 1 with the beta cells? The cells are structure function. So obviously the cells aren't pr producing, but what also affects the production of anything? The nervous system. So remember, that there, we've talked about this before, the neurological aspects of these problems. And of course, that brings you into the adrenal glands. I've always said no matter what blood sugar problem you have, the adrenal glands are always, always involved. Well, what do they sit on top of? Miss your kidneys. A year ago and had been on dialysis ever since. Whew. Ouch. I believe it is the dialysis solution used during each treatment causing multiple imbalances for her physiologically and has uh, ultimately led her to suffer with this disease, they call it. Well, remember we've talked about that before and I had a dialysis nurse in here and she was really sick. And uh, so I started working on her and she had told me she went to her medical doctor and was telling him that she just is always not feeling good and feeling sick. And he says, well, what do you do? And she says, well, I'm a nurse and I'm a dialysis nurse. And he looked at her and he said, get out. Now, I'm just telling you what I've been told in the past. Uh, also, bleach uh, cleaning and stuff like this. I mean, stripping your blood. And remember, it's only the blood that they're using. They're not dealing with the lymphatic system, which the kidneys are the main organs of. So your lymphatic system just keeps getting worse, worse, and worse, and worse, and worse, because you're doing nothing to help that. You're cleaning the blood so the blowback will keep the blood clean, and what they think. Uh, I love and appreciate all that you do. Vaughn, I do too, man. Thank you so much. Well, I don't know what this is to address this. Uh, the calcium of the body off, uh, I don't know. When you're on dialysis, all your electrolytes go nuts. Of course, your adrenals are down, so there goes your electrolytes. Uh, any atrophy, decay of the body is going to keep on going. If they're the solution, I mean, I just got to say, there's nothing healthy about any of these treatments. So it can affect you in a multitude of ways and there can be a multitude of names for these imbalances and these problems. So you want to attack it more this way. You want to focus on the health of the organism, the health of the human body and understand what the human body needs to get healthy. Well, the human body needs a fruit diet to get healthy. That's uno number one. You have to you have to be in line with your physiology. And that and anatomy basically. So that that shows us as frugivores. So and when you then look at the kidneys, I can tell you this about kidneys: they do not like protein ash or acid ash foods. Your body does not like acid ash foods. It dehydrates it. The blowback is acidosis, and that blowback then is the decreasing or the breaking down of cells structure function. So uh, whatever you want to look at it differently, I would look at it like yeah. If she's still self-urinating, still peeing, I would really, and this is just my thought, and we've done this before with others, has brought them down to two days on dialysis and really hit the kidney formulas, really hit the fruit, and then uh, got them off quickly. Because if there's not a lot of blowback in the blood, there's always going to be a potassium phosphorus blowback. These are the two minerals that are always involved. And so they give you phosphorus binders and then the potassium, they freak out because sodium and potassium. Remember, the kidneys are potassium, the adrenals are sodium. So you see this sodium potassium imbalances. Yeah, well, yeah. 
But what they don't realize is that when you start on these programs, you're backing all this up. It's not like someone that's just suddenly not doing anything for themselves and their potassiums are sky high and they claim heart attacks and things like that. No, I've seen people ride with higher potassium levels while they're detoxing. Absolutely have. So it's just some of these things you have to, depending what she's dealing with here and how you have to go after that and deal with that. Um, but that's how I would focus on the health of the kidneys to get the kidneys filtering, the health of the adrenal glands, that's the endocrine glands, that's your minerals, that's your ster uh, steroids, your neurotransmitters, that's your sugars, that's everything. So I would go after the health of these tissues. Well, the health of these tissues depends on the kidneys. That's the problem. And that's, uh, I had a couple, beautiful couple in today, and uh, you can see his kidneys really bad. And they live up in Sulphur Springs up here in Florida, and they're planting fruit trees and all this stuff. And um, a little cold up there, though, to have some of the more tropical fruits. But uh, still, you know, she's planting under the big oak trees and everything, and I hope that works out, you know. But uh, she's been a diabetic for 27 years. Simply means that her kidneys and adrenals have been down for 27 years. You know, whenever your adrenals are down, your kidneys are down. Whenever your thyroid's down, your kidneys are down. Whenever your pituitary down, your kidneys are down. Whenever your bowels are down, your kidneys are down. Whenever your heart's down, your kidneys are down. You see the connection? Always. 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 And the skin with it. Or the skin is generally second because if the kidneys go, then the other glands are going because why? Well, go to the simplicity of the body again. The body's made of what? Roughly 100 trillion cells with spaces around every one of them. What are these spaces called around all your cells? Whether it's thyroid cells, heart cells, adrenal cells, pancreatic cells, prostate cells, ovarian cells. What's around all your cells? Spaces. What are these spaces called? Interstitial. What's in these spaces? Blood and lymph. Think about it. How do we feed and how do we clean a hundred trillion little people? How do we get to them? You don't have them all lumped together, packed solid. No, because you couldn't get to them. You couldn't feed them. Somebody on the inner side wouldn't be making it well. No, it's not like a mama bird which regurgitates its food and then feeds it down the neck of another one. So one cell throwing up on another cell. No. The interstitial spaces are there to feed and clean the waste from the cell. So feeding the cell and cleaning the cell. The two obvious simplicity. And so it's easy to change the blood. It's easy to change your diet and change what's getting to a cell. Not so easy to get the sewer system going because that's 80% of that blood. So it's not so easy. And when you're dealing in acidosis, you're dealing in a, 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 an effective agglomeration or effective stagnation, hardening, uh, ripping, tearing, breaking apart, that sort of thing. Burning, welding. And so that's kidneys, always kidneys. And for those that don't get that, I mean, it's amazing because you have to have eliminative organs. You feed, but you also have to eliminate. And that's not considered in allopathic medicine, the proper elimination of metabolic waste. And that is more than 50% of the problems. I mean, 50% of what you would want to consider is the body's need to do is to eliminate the waste that it's producing whether through activity, metabolism, respiration, it doesn't matter the activities involved. It is the byproducts are always acids. Whether it's a crib cycle or whatever, just look at the cycle. Look at all the acids that are spinning off of those cycles. How does a body deal with them? And, you know, if you don't know, you can use the word autoimmune or you can come up with some crap like the body converts them all to water crap, like uh, carbon dioxide stuff. But in reality, the body has to get rid of these acids. What do you think the bacteria is in the lymph nodes for? So it's just understanding that sort of thing. That's how I would address this since I apologize. I can't, don't know what that word is. Thank God I didn't cram my brain for these 20 letter words. Oh. I'm much happier that way. You're much happier if you keep life simple. 
if you get too complex, it only serves the ego. And quite frankly, I don't need to have any ego. That's not fun. Oh. Yeah. Take a look at these pictures. Little swollen ankles, are we? And legs? What do you call that? That's not blood circulation problems. That's a form of lipedema. Well, what? While we're talking about it, what are the eliminating organs of the lymph system? Kidneys and skin. So we've got kidneys going on here, don't we? Ah, Bahama Mama. Um, after 12 vegan years of being a vegan, started on the mucus transition by Arnold Eric. Yeah, it's funny that you can move to the vegan diet, then the raw vegan diet, and you see improvements each time you move, but you don't see cures. I mean, I've, I've, I've helped a lot of people cure themselves with a somewhat with some vegetables, but mostly you got to move to the fruit, baby, which is the mucus diet. Although vegetables are mucus, not, not, not too many vegetables causes mucus. Started on an astringent fruit only a month and a half ago. Cantaloupe and black grapes. Two weeks later, edema on feet <laughs> developed to severe pain, redness, and extreme swelling on feet, which progressed to leg, very hard to walk, and, st and, st and stable four days ago. Okay, so, and this is another thing. She started on astringent fruit, uh, cantaloupe, a lot of water, and a lot of grapes. So, she immediately filled up with edema, didn't she? She immediately started swelling up. Would you blame the cantaloupe and the grapes for that? No. What would you blame for a body that starts holding water? Acidosis. Kidneys. Why did she moving in away from, I guess it's a female, why she's moving away from a standard diet into a vegan diet? She wants better health. So she has to know that she's suffering in some ways. But whenever your kidneys aren't filtering and your lymph system is backed up more than you realize, and the only way you realize is look at the iris. That's your true tell of the lymphatic system. I don't know of any other science that looks at that. And you start bringing in the watery fruits, you could get very edemic. Remember I talk about the young girl, 18 or 19, that can gain 5 to 10 pounds taking a shower? That's scary. Because acids equals dehydration. Base chemistry like the cantaloupe and the black grapes are hydration, but edema comes in when the body's so acidic, the body's going to keep that water and hold that water to try to bring an acidic balance, an alkaline balance to that acidosis. And especially when the kidneys aren't filtering and the kidneys are in trouble. When you start holding water like that, you're in trouble. You are in trouble with your kidneys and with your lymphatic system. And what other type of problem would you get real scary when you see this? All your lung problems. When you, when you start holding fluids in the lungs, very serious. Now they can spray, what is it, uh, some type of titanium or something in the lungs and uh, keep that from happening. But uh, better, you see this in advanced lung cancer cases. We get a lot of that. But as you move through that, you can get that to stop and everything else. But you've got to get, if you're going to stop the edema from swelling you up, what do you got to do? Get your kidneys filtering. So I suggest that you get away from the, a lot of watery stuff and go more down to the bananas uh, and not do juices, you know. But you can't avoid them completely. I love the black grapes. I love that sort of thing. I would probably stay away from the melons, uh, stay away from juicing, and, uh, you know, try to balance out a little bit that way. Maybe dry fast a little bit to see if I can't get those kidneys to jar open a little bit and start filtering quicker. Uh, she goes on to say that tincture she started on four days ago. She started on kidneys and bladder three and four, endocrine balance, lymph node support five, adrenal gland. Okay, so, all right, so, it was smart to do two kidney formulas. 
When I see this sort of thing, edema like that bad, I'm going to do at least two or three kidney formulas, and I'm going to do a dropper full about every three hours. That's what I'm going to be doing. Help get that moving. You can do corn silk by itself, things like that. But and if you really had to, you're going to hate me for saying this. You know, uh, you might have to get a little bit of a diuretic. Just saying. But. Uh, it really shows kidney, serious kidney problems right off here. Uh, lymphatic five, I probably got lymphatic one. Lymphatic five is real strong. Now, I'd really like to know did that help you or could it compromise you more because that lymphatic five is starting to start pulling on the lymph system aggressively, very aggressive. But if the kidneys can't handle it, which it obviously can't handle just normal water, that can be a problem. So I would, in my case, start out with lymph addict or lymph node 1 as opposed to lymph node 5. Lymph node 5 is that's when you're in stage 4, stage 3 of things. You want to get yourself up there going. But still, you have to be careful with that. But the kidney formulas, I would do a dropper full of each one of these 3 and 4. Uh, of course, kidney 3 is in capsules. But I would get kidney number 1, kidney number 2, and you got number 4. Those are all tinctures. And I do a dropper full, especially kidney number one. But I do a dropper full uh, every two or three hours until some of this came down. Or um, you might have to find some LASIK somewhere. Uh, because that becomes dangerous. You know, it's just a congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema. You know, you're starting to swell all through you. And I don't like that at all. But remember, the problem isn't with the diet. The problem is with your body and your kidneys. And that's something you've got to get through there because you can't have this happening and you've got to get your kidneys filtering. Very important. No change. What do I do? It is dangerous. I am worried. Listen to you a lot. No, I am toxic. Acid, yeah. Shall I just keep holding on? Well, you know, like I said, and these are late in the date. So all I have to say is you always have to call in here when you have a problem and not wait till I get this to read them because you could be dead by the time I get to these things. So you always want to try to call in here and get some advice from our staff here. And they will always, if they can't answer your questions, they will find someone here who can, or they'll call me and ask me. So, uh, but you want to do these kidney formulas about every, uh, like I say, a dropper full about every two to three hours when you're like this. And at the same time, keep all the liquids down to a minimum. If this gets real bad, you got to go get some Lasix. You know, get it off quicker than sooner than later. And it's sometimes, I mean, you got to interface with some pharmaceuticals. But look, 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 they brought us to this level. Thank you for your reply. I love you. Love you too. I mean, I'm sorry it's so late to read this. Sydney picks, including one of myself, just to clarify this is how skinny I am, and look at my feet and legs. Yeah, yeah, you are skinny, honey. Yep. But that's all kidneys. Kidneys, kidneys, kidneys. And you, yeah, I see that. Not good. There's how skinny she is. If you can see that. And then there's her legs. Pretty swollen. And you're right. I do not like that at all. So you want to go after that. And again, sometimes you got to go get Lasix while you're working on your kidneys and your lymphatic system. You sometimes, uh, I hate to say it, but you've got to interface with the medical profession. As bad as that is, you just know what you know and just don't worry about it. You know, just keep your mouth shut and let them uh, give you some Lasix and pull some of that fluid off of you. Because it's like in lung cancers. You come in here and you're holding water. When you get to where you can't hardly breathe, you've got to go get yourself aspirated. You got to go get a thoracitesis. You got to go get that done because we're not going to put your life in jeopardy here. But while you're while we're working this out of you and fixing the problem, sometimes you have to do these things, and then you get past that, and then you're good as gold. But uh, sometimes you got to work that way to these things. Huh. Dear Dr. Morris, thank you for all your hard work. I was born with congenital heart disease, okay? I was born with half a heart. Wow! Wow! 
I had four open heart surgeries to reroute my blood before the age of six. Look at that. That is wild. But that's what I'm saying about genetics. Holy crap. And we just keep weakening things and weakening things. We don't pay attention to regeneration. After my uh, last surgery, I had a stroke. Oh, my gosh. Holy crap, man. Which has left me uh, uh, hemiplegic for the past 30 years. The surgeries weakened, uh, yeah, wrecked havoc on my liver, I bet, over the years and now have uh, cirrhosis. Recently, I was diagnosed with endometriosis, oh, this is a female, with a 2 uh, 0.3 inch cyst. Uh, they want me to either take uh, uh, Vizan or take everything out. Well, let's go to the, the core of it. Now, I guess we're, on, we're stuck on kidneys today, but <clears throat> in your genetic lineage, obviously, kidney filtration hasn't been because when you see the mutation of tissue, what side of kidney? You only have two sides of chemistry. Which side of chemistry is more responsible for the mutation of chemistry? And it ain't acid, it ain't base, so uh oh, I gave it away. There's only one side that really mutates cells because it's only one side that keeps you in the body for extended periods of time, and it's not alkalosis, it's acidosis. And acid is what mutates, and uh, but its job is to consume so uh, and break down. So that's cationic, that's the job of acids. It's not job of alkalis, those are more electrolyte. So when you look at this, you've had to go back and fix the kidneys. Now, you can regenerate the stroke, I don't know, you know, you can work on that obviously. Uh, in terms of heart, I don't know what all they've done about building you new valves or anything like that, but it'd be interesting to see, and I don't know how old you are now, but it'd be interesting to see if you can regenerate any of that tissue. To regenerate tissue, guys, you have to be 100% raw for at least 11 months. When you're talking about this level of regeneration, you're going to be raw for a year or two. And that means 100% raw, nothing cooked whatsoever. That's how powerful that is. And the difference of that is, you can, you can experiment on yourself. Just do one month of total raw. Nothing cooked, nothing, nothing processed, nothing. Total raw for one month and then just go have you a cooked meal somewhere. You tell me the difference. You'll feel it yourself. You don't have to, you don't have to take my word for it, you know, experiment on your own self. As far as the endometriosis, go, endometriosis goes, I mean, and the cysts, they're all coming from the same system that indirectly is why I have a heart. And that's going back to the kidneys, filtration, and the lymphatic system. Acids, you know, I talk about this a lot because you see it a lot in surgeries, is that acids, you know, when the, when the uterus gets so acidic and you get endometriosis, it'll actually weld your uterus right to your bowel wall. You know, there's been a lot of, uh, of uh, surgeries where they did, you know, hysterectomies and they have had to cut the uterus off the bowel wall and just welded itself. When welding, what are we doing? We're burning highly acidic. So uh, that all can be handled through the kidneys. You've got to fix the thing anyway. You're going back in genetics anyway. And that's like going back and getting rid of the karma. You're, you're, that's exactly what you're doing and getting your body healthy. You're getting rid of the karma that your body was subjected to. And so you're being more conscious of a being controlling the physical body that you're using and you're working the karma out of that. And that is called regeneration. And regeneration is just the flip side of degeneration. Well, there's only two sides to everything. Duality rules, no matter how you stack or what form it takes, duality is at the core of everything, the core of magnetism, the core of everything, core of ionization, the, the core of, of everything, and how, how atoms uh, appear, how atoms polarize, how atoms stack, all of that. There's only two sides. And you can always judge what the problem is by looking at the nature, basically, of the two sides. Yeah, we can go at each end and claim burning on both ends. You can get way up on alkalis like a liquid plumber and things like that and burn yourself pretty bad. But by far, that's not where the, the, the life problem is, is in alkalosis. By far. It's in acidosis. By far. 
and that's where you see the destruction of the human body, and then the augmentation of cells, therefore the genetic memory and the DNA of cells, therefore half a hearts, no faces, you know, the, the advance of advancement of genetics has saw, seen the decay of the human cell like never before. So the human cell is so degraded that if the species wants to continue, it has to continue under regenerative sky. That's why we're here and present right now at this particular time in this particular planet. Is that regeneration must be taught to the earthlings, regeneration to humans. Regeneration is a key factor and we're here to teach that. And those of you that got ears to hear love you because the world needs to know that you're not stuck. There's degeneration and that's what people see all the time, but there's also regeneration out of the hell. And that's simply on the opposite side. And so that's what we teach is how do you regenerate the human body? If you do not understand the nature of the two sides of chemistry, the fact that you have two systems, fluid based systems in the body that predominantly focus on each side of the chemistry, not completely, but predominantly, and that the body is nothing but a bunch of cells and those two fluids, and that there's spaces around all the cells that deal with these two fluids, and that there's eliminative organs of the body that deals with one particular type of this fluid, and you can put it all together for yourself. But if you're looking in terms of diseases and symptomologies and you're lost with that, good luck. Because then you're really lost in creation at a level that's uh, unhappy, that is uh, painful, degenerative, and quite frankly depressing. And we don't want you to be that way because there's regeneration and, and there's happiness and joy and oneness and, and awakeness and consciousness. So um, uh, learn how to, and in this case, fix yourself. I'm interested in getting you out of this uh, hemoplegic uh, and this uh, uh, any symptoms from the stroke other than that. Uh, and what regeneration can you get in whatever has been done to the heart and the valves and things like that. How the body fixes itself when these things happen. You never know. When you're 100% raw, the regrowth of tissue, the realignment of the DNA. Remember, because when you're consuming these foods, particularly the fruits, because they're designed genetically for the human. So it matches the DNA strand, it matches all these levels. So it's going to regenerate these levels of decay and augmentation. That's why you see second and third tonsils being rebuilt and, 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 and livers being rebuilt on less than a fruit diet. So when you see the level of a fruit diet and some of the regenerative things that we've seen, I mean, even my jaw, my jaw is going, my God, you know, it just blew, blow me out of the water sometimes. I didn't realize myself at the level that you can regenerate yourself, I mean, at least your physical body. So that's where I'd be going, taking off on that and regenerate yourself, dear one. That'd be exciting. Okay, so let's go with this one. All right, so here's one. Oh my God. My wife and I have been watching and learning from you for years. We love you so much, and I love you guys back. You guys are the cat's meow of humans. My question is actually for a friend. He has a six-year-old and a seven-year-old, both with tumors behind their eyes. <laughs> Remember I talked about the nine-month-old? Nine-month-old that did? The doc keeps pushing them to do chemo. Oh my God. You know, and you want to grab them now because I tell you what, they'll force it on you if they're not careful. And so when you see this, the children are definitely suited for all fruit diet. And that's where I'd go with these lads. I, I, I would go all fruit uh, immediately with these kids and go right after the adrenals and kidneys. They're little adults. You know, they're little human bodies, still human body, still designed the same way, same body parts, still subjected to the same side of chemistry, everything except they come out compromised with mom's lymphatic systems and the genetic weaknesses of mom and dad. So go after that. When you see a tumor, you know immediately it's a lymphatic system. There, it's not a blood clot behind the eyes. It's a, it's a lymphatic clot if you want to look at it that way. 
And so you got to go out to the limp system. Well, in a seven and a six year old, what is going to probably be, and I hate to say something that's so blanket, but there's probably going to be only one system down in their bodies, kidney and adrenals and the lymphatic system. You know, it's just, it just sounds like a broken record, but the genetic weaknesses, almost all children have kidneys. It's like that. It's like the canines. They all have kidneys. Vets have said this. All canines have kidney weakness, different degrees. You see the deterioration, the hip dysplasia, all these things at different times, different paces. You'll see tumors in them nowadays, all the same stuff. We've helped them with the knowledge that we have, and they did go vegan. I'd go fruitarian. I wouldn't mess around with these kids. Uh, vegan ain't going to cut it. I'd go fruitarian. Fruitarian. I love this. Fruitarian. Because that, that fits perfect. And six and seven year old builds their nervous system and their brain power. So it's going to build their consciousness. It's going to build their awareness. It's going to build the central nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. And that's just what you want. Uh, I would say predominantly plant based. But the boys are still not healing. Now nah, you want a completely fruit base. You, I, and I've said this before: vegetable matter sucks at, at, at helping to remove tumors out of the body. I like I say, I get them from uh, Hippocrates all the time over here, and they're trying to get rid of these tumors on vegetable matter, claiming that fruit's bad for you, some bull crap like that. <laughs> But it's like, no, it takes the fruit and particularly the astringent fruit to get this done and the focus on the kidneys and the adrenal glands and perhaps the skin. I want to say it's been a couple of years they've been dealing with this. No, that's too long. Their doctor gave them fear of it's a genetic disorder and can't be healed. Tumors are not nothing to do with genetics. Tumor. Well, let me back up. The eliminative organs that deal with the system that creates tumors is genetic, absolutely. But the fluid tumors, that's not genetic. But the weaknesses that lead to that is the kidneys, adrenals, absolutely that way. But that can be fixed. Getting the kidneys to filter, just because the kidney is genetically weakened doesn't mean it can't filter. No, and you're going to regenerate that genetic weakness out of that. Just means there's a weakness in that tissue, and you're going to regenerate that that tissue. Remember that tissue. Medical doctors don't see any of this because their focus is on the effects. They're not into regeneration. They don't even know what causes degeneration. If you don't know what causes degeneration, how do you expect to learn regeneration? You don't. You can't. So that's what I'm saying. You want to move these these uh, children up.、Uh, Up to a fruitarian lifestyle, like yesterday, before the the state, you know, and all that crap comes in. You want to you want to get them on a fruitarian diet, and they're they're at the age where they need to be anyway, and their learning skills and abilities will skyrocket. And you want to fix those kidneys, so you want to go after kidney formulas, adrenal glands,、uh, at least one lymphatic formula.、I、start with lymphatic one or lymph node one, a liquid. You can get lymphatic one and liquid. So I would do two kidney formulas. If it's me and they were my children, I'd do two kidney formulas on each one of them, and I would go after. I'd give them lymphatic one with that.、Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be going after the endocrine gland system. It could be that the,、uh, the endocrine gland formula might be enough, or you might. Have to do the endocrine gland and the adrenals. How low is their blood pressure? Check their blood pressure. Get a blood pressure cup. See how low they might go. You know, and just check some of that out. If they, if they are at the doctor's office, the medical doctor, I'll have to say, "Well, can you check the blood pressure?" And I'd like to see the blood pressure on both arms, please. Just saying.、Uh, but and then、um, and, and, and no, you know what you're after. You're not after the blood. You're after the lymphatic system. Well, that includes the kidneys and the adrenals. That's the main organs of elimination, and that's where you're going to be looking. No matter what you see, the effect of it is the effect is always the globulation. The effect is always acidosis. Whether it's cell mutation and the genetic passing of that, okay, but you can regenerate that. Just because something's genetically weak doesn't mean you can't regenerate it. That, that just because the DNA is and, and, and chromosomes and all that might be a little、uh, warped doesn't mean you can't rewarp them. Yeah, so get going on those kids, though. Seriously, I mean, like yesterday, I tried to get this up. Well, Chris and Drew are down from New York, and he's the one that puts this up. So I'll see what they can do. They might be living tomorrow. Oh my God! Here, here it is. Here's another one.
Uh, I tell you what, guys, you just got to try to call in here by the time I read these, and these are old. This is uh, Urgent for Little Boy in Debilitating Pain, originally submitted 1228-17. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord. Ah. You get cases like this, guys, you make sure you get into this clinic and you get help, and that's what we're about here. R reading these things on YouTube, I, can, I only get to so many so often, you know that. If that's all I had to do was sit here and do this, we would get we would handle this. But unfortunately, uh, I, now I'm taking off some of the burden off of Attila and stuff because we've had to let a couple of our uh, counselors go. But uh, we're in training right now for new ones, and uh, it won't be long, and that burden will come off of me again. Urgent. I, I write for an 11-year-old boy who two years ago had an ear infection treated with antibiotics. I love it, don't you? Well, that brings in a lot of pain and ear pressure. That's for sure. That 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 can bring in a lot of serious problems in the head. Trigeminal neuralgia. I mean, all kinds of problems this can lead into. Upper deterioration of the C spine. I mean, just all kinds of problems there. Pain in the head. Pressure in the head. Glaucomic pain. I mean, all kinds of things like this. And it's all kidney. We're on the subject. It's all kidney related. Adrenal gland related. Why? It controls the lymph system, which this is the problem. Now, you can candle this little boy's ears to try to take some of that pressure and some of that out of there, but that's not always the answer, but you can try that. And that's, I would be candling the boy's ears, especially when you're dealing in a lot of pain. I'd be candling the boy's ears three or four candles per ear uh, as often as I needed to. At the same time, though, i got to fix the GI tract. The GI tract big pressure in the head area, I'm going after that GI tract. I'm going after the stomach and the bowels. I'm also going aggressively after the kidneys. Essential to get this lymph to start breaking loose and hydrate because pain is on the acid side. Oh, it can be on the high base, but that's not where we're at. Uh, pain is very much an acid experience, and that's why you have to get it because it breaks down tissue. It inflames the nervous system. It causes inflammation or the inflammatory response, and it's just that acids are corrosive. They start breaking down things, including nerve endings. So this is really serious stuff, no question about it. But it's leading us back to our discussion today on kidneys and adrenal glands. Uh, the infection cleared, but it's not an infection. See, that's that's the idiocy of the whole friggin' thing. What they did was suppress the immune system with antibiotics, actually compromised this child even more by killing the bacteria in the lymph nodes. So now the body, the child doesn't have any way to break down these acids even more. So then it doesn't take long, and bam, back it's again. Oh, you got the infection back again. Oh, we, we got it the first time. Oh, did you? No, you didn't. You suppressed and you killed the bacteria, which is helping to get rid of the acids that causes the pain. No, no, no. You suppressed and now you compromise the child even more and the pain can come back even with more of a vengeance. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the ongoing merry-go-round of the AMA. Uh, but pain inside the ear worsened to a debilitating level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has been taken out of school already for one year bedridden. Constant pain that makes him madman of the house. He has been 15 ENTs and docs that found no physical problem. No, because they, it's not a, it's acids that have developed in these areas. It's a lymph system. And you can't see the lymph system that's stagnant under the x-ray until you get a tumor hard enough to give me a residence, a bounce back. Oh, look, it's a tumor. Yeah, what was it before it was so hard as a tumor? Lymph stagnation. See, and so you have to go after that. And uh, canning the ears is a little way of helping that. Maybe do an eddy pot with the sinuses to get the sinuses to break loose. Uh, say, cannot help it. The latest theory is that he has something similar to phantom limb syndrome. Oh, my God. You know what phantom limb syndrome is? That's when you lose a limb. It's, you feel like it's still there. Well, it is still there. Wait a minute. If I cut off my arm, how can it still be there? It is, but not physically. Because your physical body is a reflection of two more bodies. First, remember thinking, thought creates creation. The mind creates creation. Right? So you have to have in thought, the, it does, the, the image of the human body. 
That means that in the causal world, and that's the last time in the mental world you see a form, and that is the form, at least one that's uh, involved in the lower worlds, uh, the causal body is a body of where the mind creates the original form. Then you have the emotional or astral body, which is a, a less refined body than the mental body of it, still much more refined than the human body. Then you have the human body, and this is just proof of all of this true, in that you can lose the physical side of it, but you haven't lost the astral or mental image of that arm. It's still there. That's why you still feel that still there, but that's not what this boy has. Not at all. He has true physical acidosis here. True physical acidosis that they never fixed in the first place. But you're going to the wrong docs to figure that out. From this orange section, this is the orange is the causal. That's the memory body. That's where your past is thought. That's where you see your past life. Do you want to know where you have past lives? Go to that plane and you'll see them. From down there, you got the astral and then the human body and the uh, physical world. That chart's a lot of fun. So uh, I get I get this problem, and that his nervous system needs to be retrained with behavior therapy. Oh, oh, oh that's a sweet one. Oh, really? So the behavior therapy is going to help this child that's in so much chronic pain that he couldn't even stand to go through therapy. Number one. Oh man, have I heard all kinds of crap from the AMA? And this is one of them. This is one of them. I had migraines growing up. Of course, we all were milk drinkers, heavy milk drinkers. I had to use nose drops to breathe, so we drank a lot of milk. We were farmer people, and so we drank a lot of milk. Nobody told us, right? And so I had migraines. They took me to a medical doctor, and he said, you know what? His, his eye muscles are not mature yet. Now, I was probably nine or so when I went then. So he said, he needs to read an hour every day. Well, I had to play the piano an hour every day and then read an hour every day with migraines. I mean, the idiocy of this, and that's why I'm such a proponent now, because I've been through some of this crap and it's just bull, bull stuff, bull stuff. They put him on two SSRIs and I to and one to, to calm the nervous system. <laughs> the meds make all touch on skin painful. He cannot wear clothing, shoes, or socks. He has only adjusted with a thin bed sheet. Important. Is he allergic to apples plus some fruit? Important. He is allergic to apples plus some fruit. Well, give him the fruit that he's not, but allergic. If it's not an anaphylactic shock, it simply means that the fruit are starting to kick up the uh, lymphatic system and you start to see the skin breaking out and everything else. That's not an allergic reaction. That is a detoxification reaction. Allergic reaction would be more an anaphylactic shock, the throat's closing off, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, please help. Uh, thank you, Doc. So much love to you. I tell you, Melinda, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I'm just not getting to this. I will. This will be the last one today. I will get this to uh, them to get this up now as much as I can uh, get this done. And so uh, let, me, uh, let me get her in here real quick here. Uh, See if I can get this video up for you as quick as I can because these things make me sick to my stomach that we can't address them quicker. Hey, honey, can you come get this? Uh, a lot of stat needs here. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, he flies out. Okay, okay, okay. But we can at least get it uploaded tonight, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Bye, bye, honey. All right, so. She's coming to get the card out of this and hopefully get this up. It'll be downloaded tonight and up tomorrow. Tonight is Monday night. Monday. Uh, and um, so for you guys on a more pleasant note, oh, um, what was it? Um, uh, the singing show that's on, not the voice that's on tonight, but it was uh, um, American Idol. Alejandra, Alejandra, he is so good. I knew the young guy was going to win because there's a lot of young girls voting. But Alejandra, he's a musician. He's an artist and a half, isn't he? Amazing, amazing, amazing. But 
whenever you find yourselves in pain and suffering, don't wait till I answer this on the on the YouTube. I think it's important that we read them to you all so you know what we're getting in here. But we get these every day in here. It's a it's so that's why you see me with Kleenex is crying all the time because it is so bad here so bad you know and i feel i feel that's why you guys are so important to help us here to help the other world here this world is suffering so bad i i didn't really have, knew it was suffering that much Whew. but uh i just wish i'd have had these done years before this but you know time is where it's at but whenever you have anybody in chronic pain, the first thing you do is hydration. You've got to get the diet into the alkaline side of chemistry. That's anti-pain, anti-acid, anti-inflammatory. And that's the first thing you got to do is get these, get them going on. And you want to get to the fruit, no matter what fruit they can tolerate, you want to get them up on this. Then what are you going to go after? The kidneys, the adrenal glands. You're going to go after for more steroids, neurotransmitters. Open up the kidneys to filter. You're going to go after all these areas. You can candle the ears. You can work on the neural lymphatic system. You can do the neti pots, things like this to help take pressure off of the head. But this uh, behavioral uh, problems, uh, that's ridiculous. These are very serious physical chemical problems here that they just seem to not understand. How interesting is that? You know, kind of sad, isn't it? But we do, and we're here to educate you guys to understanding and then help the world too. Pass it on. The buddy system. Remember, the buddy system. For, for when as you awaken yourself, so shall you awaken others. Love you guys so much.